Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, a TCP connection again as we did last time. But this time there's a, going to be a slight difference to it. So on the left here, I have the new code that we're going to be learning today. And on the right, I have the code that we did last period or last uh, session. And so let's take a look at what's different and let's see if we can draw a pictorial representation of how things are going to be different this time. So notice here on lines five and seven, you know, line six, we're doing the same thing, okay, setting up the socket. Line eight, same thing, being, being able to reuse it. Uh, lines 10 and 11, the only difference is he, last time we hard-coded the host and the port. This time we're getting it as command line arguments. No big, no big deal. Um, we're binding and listing, binding and listing. Okay, so everything so far is the same. Now is where things start to change. So today, um, after, after bind and listen, we go into a while loop. Whereas last time, after bind and listen, we wait uh, for a connection. And once that connection is established, that's it. So um, that's the only connection that we have. And then we simply receive data from that connection. That's what we did last time. And remember, the server would only be able to receive data from that one connection, okay? So essentially, if I was to draw a picture of what was happening, let's say this is our uh, server computer, and this was our client, then essentially you you know you have your python program you have your socket and then it's connected to the port and um this client program kind of does the same thing and then but this one's like a, a high port so uh, and then i think this one last time we used i don't know 3000 something anyways and the connection's established with TCP. And essentially, all that ends up happening is we're sending data uh, in this direction. And if you'll notice in the code, can we send more than one piece of information? So let's, let's see. So uh, here on the right, um, essentially, what we were doing is we established the connection, uh, or sorry, no, 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 no. This is the, hold on a second. Okay, so I brought up the program, uh, the sending program that we used last session. Notice here, after we connect, we grab keyboard input and then we send it and it's, it's game over. So we send one message and the program terminates. That's it. So essentially, if we, and this was the, this was the server side last time, we can grab one message and, you know, um, if the message was bigger than the number of bytes uh, that we were receiving, well, we would loop until we got the entire message and we hit uh, the binary empty string. Okay, great. So this is what it looks like. So this was a this was a one time one time message last last day. So today, what I'd like to do is I would like to be able to have a situation where once we create this connection, once the connection is created, I'd like to be able to send data back and forth from the client to the server. So actually have a conversation, like a 
back and forth. So how are we going to do that? Well, take a look. Let me close this one. This is the old one. And so now we're looking at, um, OK, so in this one here, uh, this is the send that we're going to be using with this receive on the left. Notice when we're in the while true loop, that's where we wait for the connection. OK? And the, on the client side, again, we only send one message. But after we send the message, then we actually wait for a message to in, in, in return. So on line 11, we, we send it. And then we're waiting for a response. And then after we get the response, we print it, and then we're done. So perhaps it's not like a endless back and forth. But um, this, by the way, this server actually has a specific name. And the name of it is called an echo server. And the reason why it's called an echo server is because if you'll notice, when we receive the data here on line 21, then we we actually um, decode it, double it, so multiply it by two. So if, if the client says hello, the server is going to reply back with hello, hello. Uh, you know, if the client says uh, what's up, the server is going to say what's up, what's up. So that's, that's called an echo server. So let's try it. So um, first we have to run the, the um, server. TCP receive two, and we're going to have to say localhost here because this is a command line. And let's pick port 5555. Oops, too many fives there. And um, now you see where we are. We're before accept. And now we go to the client side, and let's run the client. So. TCP send to dot .py. And again, we're going to connect to localhost and port 5555. And now, so now the connection has been established. Okay, Line 16 return. Where are we now? Well, right now, we're blocking on line 21, which is uh, con.receive. So now we're going to have to come over here. On the client side, we're blocking on keyboard input, which is line 10. So we'll say, you know, hello. And even let's, let's make it nice and let's put a space after hello. And we'll hit Enter. And the server replies, hello, hello. And this is done. This is finished. But look, the server side is not finished. Okay, the server is still waiting. So conceivably, here's the cool thing, is that let's go back to our um, kind of drawing over here. The way this now works is that essentially what's different about this, what's, what's kind of more flexible, is that now there can be multiple computers sending an multiple clients, I should say, that are sending information to the server, so a whole bunch of them. And whatever they say, the server is going to double it and send it back to them. Okay, So that's kind of cool, because now the server is able to communicate with an unlimited supply of clients. And well, obviously, it's a pretty simple server because it's just doubling what they say and, and mirroring it back to them. But nonetheless, we're able to do this because we have placed the accept to establish the connection inside the while true loop. So notice that. The, co the connection is established, but also 
the address is different every time. And so when we send, um, it's going to that new connection. Does that make sense? So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to copy this code and test it out. All right? So pause the video here. Okay, so one thing I may have forgotten to mention, and that is if you look on the left here on the server side, we're in a while true loop, and there's no if condition that's going to break out of this. Uh, so that's not great. Uh, essentially, <coughs> we're going to have to hit control C to end that side, but we should actually have a, a, try, accept, uh, a try accept to catch that so we can do con.close, but maybe I'll fix that later. Okay, so one thing that we need to check here is that this last line, con.close, came after the while true loop, but the problem was, was that the while true loop doesn't have an if and a break. So essentially, the only way to stop this code was to hit Control C. And that's what I did here at the bottom. And that gives me a keyboard interrupt. So what I decided to do is I put, a, I put the while true loop inside a, a try accept block. And so now, if I hit Control C, I'm going to capture the keyboard interrupt. And then it's going to actually do con.close. So now, if I run this again, let me just save it, and I can come down here. So, so notice last time I got uh, when I control C'd it, my program actually, I, I caused my program to crash, and so the last line, which was the connection dot close, was skipped. So let's try it again this time. So now, and let's send some data as well. Okay, and and now. I'm going to come over to my server side and hit control C and notice I did not it did not say you know keyboard interrupt uh, and trace back blah 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 it actually quit elegantly and the last line con dot close uh, was in fact executed uh, you don't actually have to put keyboard interrupt here on the accept if you just did Except then any type of uh, exception would cause con dot close, but in this case I'm specifying it explicitly. So in other words, any other type of error would actually cause my program to to crash to end. But Control C, which is a keyboard interrupt, would cause it to to end in a intended way. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time.